and welcome to another live demonstration. Someone said to me, New Year, New Start, and that really stuck with me. Um, I thought it was a lovely saying. So, New Year, New Start. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a few um, tips of the trade. So, when I bring you a live demonstration, I will have done some preparation. It's not all just done there and then. I'm not that good, really. Um, so I will have had to prepare, had to choose colours, had to see what works, even done a full um, painting in order to know the stages. So it doesn't just come straight away. So how do I do that? I do it on various pieces of paper. I use the same paper, but I also will use a sketchbook or in this case, a visual journal. Um, I like the visual journal because it's a watercolour paper and I like the texture of watercolour paper, even if I'm using graphite or pens. So it kind of covers all the mediums I'll use um, in one book. I spiral bound, which is always fabulous because it means you've got a, a solid surface so you can work out on the field, you can hold it in your hand, you can write notes. Um, and it means you just keep everything together. So I'm writing notes. Um, doing little sketches, dates, places I've been, little doodles when I'm just sitting there and I can't think of anything to do. Just doodle. Just think of words. I've not finished it. I don't know if I finished it. Didn't know where I was going with it. Don't like it. But it was just a bit of maybe I'll take something from it another time. This silver fish I did recently. Again, just planning. Did I want a lot of fish? Did I want one fish? What shape did I want it? Um, all just plans and I will often do everything planning with a pen um, not a pencil because I find a pencil people are very happy to use a pencil because they can rub it out so I don't think it keeps that creativity flowing it kind of goes oh no let's rub it out start again no rub it out and I think that takes you backwards so go in with a pen these are your sketches these are your ideas they don't have to be on display apart from I'm showing you the, mine now. Um, but I think be brave. Use a pen, a biro, a napkin. I mean, a lot of great artists have done some great works on a napkin. Writers, artists, designers, all on a napkin. So it's a good way to start. And you can see here, I was trying this. I didn't get enough space for the wings. Tried it again. Probably body's a little too short. I'm not sure. Um, this is my plan for next week. Um, when you're stuck for things to do, which I know we all get, I have to think of something to bring you each week. Just look around you. And I've got this little cactus, Christmas cactus, and it's just starting to flower. Now I know it's not looking as great as I've seen some, but it's been with me at least 25 years. Um, so I'm quite happy. Basically, because I don't do much to it, it's, it's probably thriving. It's actually probably as old as the jumpers Gary's wearing at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> and that is actually true. He told us that earlier. So again, planning. So my cactus is still um, only got one flower. It's not in full flower yet. That's a great opportunity for me to start. I can look at the leaf, look at the new flower on it, draw that. Now, that can be the start of a composition when it starts to flower or more flowers come out to another painting. So you can actually develop from one small um, thing. So here, again, because mine's not flowering yet, I've got images from um, the internet, but images you can use that you're allowed to use. I always do that. Most of the time, I will take my own photographs, stick them down, my own images of a subject, and that takes away any copyright issues. But sometimes... It's just not, um, you're not just not able to get them. So make sure you go to reputable sources to get images from. And then I'll crop, I'll look at shapes I like. So these are pictures, stuck them in here, mainly for colour. I don't like the compositions of them, but I might see aspects of this that I can put and um, amalgamate into different drawings. So it doesn't have to be one photograph. I don't have to do that whole thing. I can do bits of it. So here again, looking at shape, looking, do I want to do the whole plant? Do I want to just do the leaves? Or do I want to concentrate on the flowers? 
So once I've done that, I can decide on mediums. So I know which medium I'm using next week. So I want to try it out. I'm trying it out in this book um, to start with. When I do it on a different piece of paper, which I will do, because I do it on a flat piece, again, I will test before I try, because um, the pens, the mediums work differently on different papers. So this is a 90 pound, I think it was 90 pound, was it Graham? A 90 pound paper. So it's perfect for watercolour. It has a nice textured surface, great for inks. What I did find, which was a surprise, that when I put these Derwent graphic pens on, they didn't move once they were dried, and yet they're supposed to. It's surface dependent, not a fault with the pen. It's the surface of this paper has obviously gripped the pen, not allowing it to move. It will move fine on other papers. So something I've learned from this, um, I need to test it on the paper I'm using. While it's wet, it moves great. And again, what colours do I need? Because in my box, I've got a limited range of colours. I've got a green, one green, but I want to get all these tonal values. So how do I achieve that? Look at the colours I've got. Um, I write down the numbers because sometimes if you want to replace at some time and you go, oh, what was that lovely colour I had? So all these notes are your reference and there's actually really, you can go, oh, I'm sure I've written that down somewhere. What paper I used? How often have you gone, oh, what was that lovely colour I saw someone using? What was that paper that I wanted to try? Just write it down. So I always have a little, maybe not this size, but a small one um, with me. And again, I'm using a photograph there. I'm adding bits to it, using a pen, writing notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little sketch, probably do this again and just show you how I think while I'm doing my sketchbook. So doesn't matter if I put things on the back, on the bit, if I break it into sections. It's, it's all just my thought process. Sometimes it gets very chaotic. And often, on the first page, when I'm starting, I will leave it blank or just do a squiggle. Because, you know, when you're faced with a lovely, pristine book and you look at it and you go, I don't, want, don't know what to fill it with, don't know where to start, because you've got that first blank page. Ignore that first blank page. Sometimes I would just do cross hatches or do a heart on it. Do something that you can then turn over and you've started. It just gets you going. I know it sounds daft, but I've often kind of stood there and go, it's really nice, it, I don't know what to put in it. So just get yourself started. So I might use my life plant. And again, if you want to do a Christmas cactus, as best as possible, do it from life, but use other references. Um, it, it just, you, I can see things which I can't see in a photograph. And then I can decide which things I want to show you. Do I want to show you the red veins going through and the tiny little hairs on the end of the leaves? Or am I just going to show you the shape? So I'm just going to do that one with the little flower and looking at the shape, it's got a break out of it there. So coming round and it seems to have little nodules like that. And there's another branch coming off here. And again, it has little nodules and that's much greener on this side. So it's obviously a newer leaf than here. It's got a vein down the middle. Using my pen, doesn't matter if it's not quite the same. Again, it's your image. I'm not overly worried about if I go wrong because I can put the lines in correctly. It's actually really nice for you to see how you've corrected yourself and you've, you know, said, oh, that didn't work. How do I alter it? So I will often give people a pen to draw with and they'll kind of go, oh, I want a pencil. If I give them a pencil, I make sure I've taken the erasers off the end and there are no erasers in sight. And actually they can surprise themselves because they gain confidence and say, actually, I can do it. So this has got a beginning of a flower here. It's got a different colour there. It's more yellow. Maybe I'm going to add this other side. So you'll see I'm constantly looking at the subject. 
and I will look before I make that mark just to know that I'm putting things in the right direction. Right, that's close. Let me just change the angle a little bit. So it's thinner, a little bit fatter there. It's quite flat at the end. The ones I was looking at earlier were a little bit more round. Okay. That's all I'm going to do for that. It's a sketch. Now, actually, I quite like this bit here. So again, I'm thinking, I'm thinking again, is that all I need? I quite like, that's obviously an old stem. And I like the colours of it. And I like the shapes and the textures. There you go. I, when I was drawing, I didn't have a plan of how that was going to turn out. It just happened, actually, I'm looking at it again. The leaf goes behind. It's changed it. It's altered the composition. So this is where you can see, do I need to move this over here? Did it work? Did it not? So I will do lots of these little sketches. So now for colour. And I could say in this set, I have one green. It's not enough um, to do this. So through my planning and looking at what other colours, the brilliant blue and the yellow, you can mix them together to get some lovely tones. So the blue and the yellow. Now, if you've never worked with these pens before, um, they can be a bit of a surprise. They are lovely. Um, really great on dark papers. They're opaque. Um, but they can be a little bit um, wet when they come out of the, you can see there, they come out of the nib. That's absolutely how they're supposed to. And you can actually use that what I do is I often, this is why Gary tried to take my palette away because I'm not using watercolour, but I will use this. So to activate, you press down and you release some colour. Now that colour I will use at a later date with my water brush and I'll pick it up and lift it. So I'm just going to show you using the pen in a pen form. This is a bit scratchy, so actually I think it needs a bit of a clean and that's easy to do. I can take the nib out. I will show you all this um, in my next demo because you'll see almost this again. I'll obviously do a little bit more detail. This is a sketch, so it's not going to be a detail. This is my thought process. So I know if it dries quite quickly, it won't move. So let's see. This is just water in here getting it to move and make sure the page is wet. Look at that. I actually still like the pen marks underneath. I think that's a great character. So on this surface of paper, these pens don't move as well as I have seen them do in the past. Like I say, it's something I've learnt from using it on this paper. And I know when I use it on my other paper, I need to test it. So as it's got, to squeeze a little bit more water down, drier, it's not moving as much. Let's try and push it into the paper. How well will the papers withstand this? It's going, that's a little better. Again, not overly worried about that. I actually quite like that. But in this occasion, they're quite smooth. So what I'm going to do, it's going to pick up some of the colour that I'd already put on the palette and maybe just soften this a little bit because these leaves are quite smooth and shiny. So I don't know if the pencil, the scratchy pen look worked. Again, I'm just thinking, does it work, doesn't it? What do I need to do? How can I alter it? Is this going to work as I would like it to? So a little bit more water and dipping into the paint that's on the palette. I'm not going to be talking about the pens as much. I can say I will do that in my demonstration next week. This is just how I'm using this sketch pad to think. It's my think pad really. There you go. So much happier with that. That works better. So I obviously need to use the pen like this and I like how that's much lighter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some colour from this pen, 
be very light with it. Okay, let me get a bit of tissue because with a water brush, you do need to make sure you decontaminate before you mix into a colour. Okay, clean water coming out. Now I can mix this to darken. I will look back at um, the subject, but to be honest, now I'm on the road of colour. A lot of it is going to be what I feel, what I like, what I'm looking at. Not always the actual colour of the um, plant. Um, this is kind of my interpretation a little bit more. Do look back because sometimes it will help with shadows. Am I getting the right light in the right place? But a lot of it I'm kind of just going with what I'm seeing on the page, happening on the page. Okay. I'm not, I'm purposely not finishing it or smoothing it or softening it. I'm just, this is planning. It doesn't have to be overly finished. I'm actually quite enjoying this. I do like this stage because it's less pressure. Um, it's kind of a step towards something else. So a little bit of the yellow, just to see if I can add a little bit of light. But actually I think it worked quite well. Anyway, the light seemed to come out with the loose style. Okay, just contaminate my brush. Because it is always a surprise when you come with a water brush and you put it on the page think it's clean water and it's not. So I'm going to put, use the pen to put colour on the bottom. And I don't need a lot because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the colour up. And you can see while it's wet how lovely it moves. Get some cleaning. And I'm wetting this end because I want it just to drag in and be a lot softer. Okay, that worked. Um, not overly difficult. I'm going to now use a little bit of the yellow because it's a little bit more yellowy and maybe mix with the green. So yes, these are a pen, but they can be used if you're comfortable with a watercolour technique. Right, I've added this bit and I hadn't chosen a colour for that. So this is all new all seeing what happens. So I might use a little bit of the yellow. Just give myself a base layer. I find yellow is quite a nice colour to put as a base layer. Then a bit of this brown. Uh, what was it called? Brick Lane. So it's going to be quite red, I think. Yeah, that's nice. Again, it's not a detailed piece of work at the moment. It's a thought process. Let's see if I mix some of the blue into this brown. Do I get a darker colour? Yes, that's nice. Much darker. That's more of the colour I was looking for. But I like that yellow and orange colour. I'm going to leave it. What I can do, because these are a pen, I can also add a little bit more fine detail build up layers if I want to. And you can see there, might work on just that one. Um, it's a leaf, I think. Um, just to see how I can build up the layers and make it a lot more realistic if I can. These are all just thought processes. What do I want? Soften. Use the yellow, how opaque is the yellow over the, oops, over the um, green. Maybe put a little bit more blue in. That's quite strong if I put it straight in. So need to move it. That's nice. And let me see if I can add white. Let's just activate. Let's add some white 
bits on. They have. That's nice, that's working well. Don't think I like the scratchiness, but I know I can use my pen to soften. So this is how you end up with a piece that you can just bring to camera or you can just, you're happy with in the end by trying things. What I would do is I can go back, work on this, but it's a sketch pad. I've dropped a piece of yellow on it. Well, let's just move it around. It doesn't matter. Oh, maybe I'll put a background on now. All of it is just thought, just play, see what happens. Um, and it's through these play bits in your journal that actually you can have a eureka moment go, oh, I like that. Oh, see this bit? It was a drop. Oh, I didn't. That wasn't supposed to happen. But how can I use it? Oh, that works nicely. Or didn't expect that to happen. So, um, new year, new start. So, get your journal. You know, start with like I'm doing this um, Christmas cactus, just starting to flower. I can do some more um, sketches of it when it starts to flower um, in different locations, in different lighting. It just starts. You'll end up filling your book in no time. So I hope you enjoyed that um, demonstration using the visual journal and join me next week where you will see me do a demonstration using all these materials of a much more full Christmas cactus. So join me then.